Now what I'm counting on in the modification that I make a lot of times instead of one two slip two is that when I step out Hey guys, it's Eli Knight here with JD Caputo at the Oromanto Boxing Club at Oromanto, New Brunswick, Canada. And um, we've been discussing, we're doing kind of a series of these because it's been just too fun to put in one video. It's going to be like 80 minutes long. So we're doing this segment on uh, striking and doing boxing combinations to get into the clinch actively and seeing how the mechanics of some of these strikes really set us up for a, a really dominant clinch to be established. So um, we talked uh, briefly about some different combinations already and we've got another good combination that JD was having here. Yeah, man, so here lately at the Oromoto Boxing Club, we've been working, and it's kind of a mainstay, and a lot of the boxers, if you're out there, you guys know this, MMA strikers, right? So you got, we're just feeding that good one again, so we got that straight punch down the middle here, right, like right straight down the pipe, again, straight from the shoulder, not flaring the elbow, and I'm going to feed a right cross. Now, when I feed a right cross, what's really important is if you look at my foot here, I don't know if you can see this, but what's really important is the punch actually starts on my foot. I'm going to turn my foot, just like I'm kind of crushing the peanuts on the floor, you ever stamp a peanut out, crush a bug, whatever. Right, you're going to turn your foot and you're going to feed a right cross straight out from there. Right, you want to project that power outwards. These are both straight punches. Easy way to tell if you're having trouble, your elbows flare out wide. So we're going to add a slip and then we're going to add another punch, but I got a modification here and I think Eli likes it too. So we're going to go one, two, and maybe Eli just to keep this combative feeds a jab back at me, right? So I'm going to slip and throw it too. Now notice there's a mild step in there. So again, so I'm going one, two, get his hands up, punches back two, right? Now, one of the tricks is a lot of times if he's a good boxer, he's going to have his hands up, a good fighter, he's going to have his hands up. So when I come in, I'm like, one, two, this drives the hands up, right? Now, what I'm counting on in the modification that I make a lot of times instead of one, two, slip two, is that when I step out off the jab, so as soon as the jab comes out and I get out of the way here, as soon as I get over here, a lot of times he covers up and he covers up really well. So what I got to do is I'm going to come over the top with an overhand, again, turning the foot, same mechanics, engaging the hip, creating the power. And then I, I can score this hit in here, and I kind of get behind his guard a little bit. And I know Eli's got some great tricks when you get behind somebody's guard. Yeah, I like uh, those rounded punches. So as we're going in off these long range punches and getting from straight to curve, whether it's hooks, uppercuts, overhands, uh, a good thing about those is they act as kind of like a can opener or a pry bar sometimes. So like Josh was talking about, like we go here, here, here. Yep. so we got one, this, you here, go double, two, cross, two like yeah, this. If I feed a jab back, you're just gonna slip and step, right. and there it is. Yeah. Now you got that wide angle, you see, super loaded. Look at the power on the hip here, man. He's loaded all day long. Here comes that big awful shot, boom. Oh. So there, hopefully that lands like right there on the jaw, right there behind the ear or something, and just clips him, takes him down, and he's done. But if not, then from here, again, I'm using that hook, and I'm gonna make him kind of carry my weight so it's going to open and pry open his uh, his guard from this and then I step inside I'm leading in with my head if it's a, a headbutt it was an accident I promise so we get here like this and then I'm going to hook up here on the shoulder nice and high and then this hand here let's go this way this hand here is going to reach across to make sure that if anything is coming from over here I'm not going to eat it like so this is certainly kind of two purposes here it's like I'm throwing this across his body so that Either one, I'm going to check his bicep as he's throwing that in, or I'm going to go over it and cover my head with my shoulder so I don't have to worry about eating that shot. Then I move in to establish this clinch a little bit more, so I'm hugging, hugging here nice and tight like this. Now, from this, I can actively strike um, from this position here. I can bring this back up and hit like this here. Again, I'm, I'm kind of driving him a little crazy with my head and being annoying like this. Um, and I can also kind of affect his posture and his structure here like this too a little bit. So if I start to twist and turn, then he's really affecting his base. Um, again, if I want to like try to get more to the rear of him, then I can take this one, I can throw this by like this, and then I'm more to the back of him. And then uh, at this point here, if I throw a couple of shots, right, then maybe it's uh, not the worst thing in the world. If he wants to get out of this, then he's going to have to step pivot and turn to his left. When he goes to turn to his left here, well, he can catch the hook on the way around, he can catch uppercut on the way around. I have to figure out based on the as he turns, what kind of guard he's already been able to formulate or whatever, but that's a really good clinch position and it allows me to stay active and striking in and the grappling aspect of it. So if we go to the push to the back here, because this could be done pretty quickly. So if we go, if you've actually got this grip here, so he goes to shove over, maybe I'm a little high. As soon as I turn around guys, and we all know this, if you're out there and you strike and you do some striking right, you know how this works. Even if my guard's up and I don't know what's coming, like, man, that's really hard to stop, guys. It's really bad. We've all eaten that punch we didn't know was coming and gone home rubbing the jaw, right? <laughs> so 
Again, guys, striking and grappling, I really like that. I think that that's a powerful addition to the overhand, and it's a great combination, man. Yeah, and then these these can stay kind of fluid, too. It depends on, like, the modality that you're, you're, you're pursuing here, whatever kind of, like, approach that we're taking. Maybe I'm a, a more of a pure striker, and so my grappling and the clinch has to, like, try to benefit my striking a little bit more. Maybe this is more Muay Thai, and so we can kind of blend those a little bit more. Maybe this is MMA, and I might be using the striking and the, the clinch and keeping the clinch active until I can set up my takedown and get the, the, the fight to the floor. So whatever it is, um, there's a lot of different like principles of how one can benefit the other. And it's great. Like JD was saying, man, do both of these and, and make sure that you're proficient in both areas. Yeah, absolutely, man. Add to, don't take away from. This has been a ton of fun, man. If you're out there, man, dear guys, don't be clannish. Don't dig in, man. Get out of those trenches. Meet one another in the middle of that battlefield. Strikers and grapplers come together. We're having a blast, man. Ormokdo Boxing Club, Ormokdo Canada. JD, Eli Knight.